everyone, I'm Caroline and today I fancied making some Victorian spring decorations. Spring is in the air here in Wales, the days are lengthening, the birds are starting to come all around picking up bits and pieces for their nests, it's quite exciting. Right, no time for chatting, let's get on with crafting. Hmm, what can you do with a cribbage board? I've come across several cribbage boards over the years and I'm always wondering what I can do with them and I've come up with an idea for this one. I'm going to use a skewer, well actually I'm going to use several skewers and my garden shears and I've marked three inches along this skewer and on the first three inch section I'm going to cut at an angle like that and the next one I'm going to cut straight and an angle straight, an angle straight, you get the idea and you end up with one straight edge, one pointy edge and I cut lots. Probably a good idea not to use black pen to mark these. I've now got black pen on them which is really frustrating but it'll be fine. You know me, I'm not a perfectionist. Out with a glue gun which never seems to have a glue stick waiting ready. I always seem to be at the end of my glue stick. <laughs> I know that it can't be right but it does feel that way sometimes. These skewers were slightly bigger than the holes in this cribbage board, so I've used my drill and I put quite a thin end, but slightly bigger than the holes and I've made the holes a little bit bigger. You may need to do that. You may find you've got thinner skewers. So I just pop a bit of glue into the hole, poke in my skewer. Now I'm not gonna put one in every hole because that was just gonna be too many I want to be able to see a little bit of the twine we're going to add. So every other will be fine. Try to get them as level as you can. Just do your best. Now I got one too many holes here. I've tried all different combinations. I can't get every hole to work for me. So I'm going to skip the last one. Then pop one in the middle bit there. And then carry on back along the other edge, skipping that first hole. So there we've got a cage. Now I'm going to take my twine. We're going to start wrapping these. And I just thought I didn't check that I'm not going to end up with an odd one. So we'll find out. <laughs> check you're not going to end up with an odd one. You should be, if I'm good, you're good on your cribbage board. And if I'm not, you're not because cribbage boards are all the same. As far as I know. <laughs> put my finger protector on and then I'm going to put the string on the twine into a bit of glue inside the cage and then start wrapping it in and out. Yep, it's worked out wrong, typical. There we go, I fixed that so don't tell anyone. It's our little secret that I got that completely wrong. So just put a double stick in the one end and that way then you'll have I suppose you need an odd number now I know <laughs> I've never really thought about it I've always just winged it and so far everything's gone right but this time it didn't work it caught me out and then carry on wrapping round and around we've been on the inside of this one we're now on the outside and then this one we're on the outside and now we're going on the inside perfect and then you get the idea. Keep going. This one's a bit of an annoyance. He was leaning over and now the twine is pulling him even worse. So we're going to ignore that one, okay? That one is really straight. He's just pretending to be lying down. Now, if it's driven you bananas going this far, don't worry because we're about to speed things up. We're going to do a different type of weaving now. 
you go around and then back and around on everyone like this. And what you'll find is that you go around in double speed. So I'll show you slowly. Go to the front, around the back. To the front, around the back. To the front, around the back. Let's see if I can show you a bit more clearly. In front, behind, and tighten. From the top, from the front to the back, from the front to the back. So you're actually surrounding each skewer with a loop of thread, like that. And then keep going. Then you just carry on with that pattern for about another inch. When you've done an inch of this different stitch, I'll show you there, you can see the difference. When you've done an inch of that, you can either carry on if you're enjoying it or go back to the original, which is what I'm going to do. And finish off that last inch with just a basic in and out weaving, round and around till we get to the tops of the skewers. And I'm sure there's a terribly clever way of finishing off the end on something like this, but I cheat and I just pop the twine back to the bottom and glue it in place. And we've got this. Now it's getting very precarious because it could at any minute pop off. You have to be very careful. And also you are at the mercy of your shortest little piece of skewer. So I'm now going to chop all the rest off to be about the same height. Be very careful that it doesn't all start coming off. Make sure you've got your front face in you. And then I'm going to come around the top using this thicker rope. And just sort of hiding these little pieces of skewer that's sticking up. It would be a better job if you cut them really short, but I haven't got the confidence to do that. I just get the feeling I'm going to end up with all my twine back off again. you do one final wrap over the top of the little pieces of dowel. Two reasons, one to hide the ends of the dowel and two to make sure that none of that twine has any possibility of popping off. Would you have finished the top of this basket any differently? I would love to know because this is the only solution I've ever come up with. Not being a basket weaver and using all the raw ingredients that are not going to bend and be pliable <laughs> like skewers. This is all I can come up with. If you were using willow you could weave the loose sticky up bits in then and do a lovely pattern on the top but that's not going to happen for me and my skewers. I think this has a very Victorian look and something the Victorians like is cats. So I got this little cat, I got this from a car boot sale and I paid, I think it was a pound for three. I'm just gonna pop some hot glue on there and pop him by the side of the basket, like that. And then you can use this basket for whatever you want. I'm gonna put a lovely little spring floral display in. So here's my spring floral display in a cribbage board. Let's see what this looks like upon my spring display.
If you're enjoying this content, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Right, back to crafting. I'm going to make a Victorian style spring display that can be used any time of year, but I've decided to pick this spring-like fabric because it's springtime. And I've got this spindle. Now, you don't need to use an old spindle like this. This is something I had in an auction box years ago. And I've been waiting to find that perfect thing to do with it. And I think I found it. On the inside of a roll of ribbon. This spool is about three inches wide and about one and a half inches tall. And I've cut a piece of fabric about 10, 11 inches long. Oh, in diameter. Pop your cardboard roll in the middle and then bring up one end and poke it in. And then tuck it nicely, as nice as you can, it hasn't got to be too accurate, and move around slowly like that, making nice little folds all the way around and tucking the excess into the hole. This is quite a nice thing to do and you can't get it wrong because you're not gluing anything. So if it goes wrong, just pull it out and start again. I like this sort of craft. It's very tactile when you're doing this sort of thing. You really get stuck in with your hands. So when you come all the way round, get to your last tuck and give it an extra push. Make sure your finger doesn't get stuck though, and then you have to undo it all when you pull your finger out. I've got this print. It's a print from an original flower painting painted in Wales by Victoria Young of Llandridnod, Wales. And it's of Cyclamen. So that I thought would look lovely on there. I've got this draw knob as well that I picked up in a thrift store. I think I had 10 for three pounds. It was a really good price, but this silver doesn't go with it. So out with a gilding wax or gilding cream. I love this. I'm just gonna gild over that bit to give it a bit more aged Victorian look. It's very difficult to get your finger in there. I suppose I should use a brush, but I like the tactile feel of doing that. It hasn't got to be perfect, it's just to take that brand new shiny look off it. That's going to go on the top there, like that. And as you can see, complete coincidence, it's a perfect fit. So out with a hot glue, push it onto the top. Ooh, looks like a magic wand. The next thing is to decide what height you want to put this at. Any height would look good. I like it about there. So if I'm putting it there, if I look on the back, if you're using a spindle, you can see which bits are actually touching so you know where to glue. So I need to glue the top two circle bits and just above there. Center it up and then hold it till it cools. While the glue is setting, I'm gonna bring out my little ribbon roll again. Now I'm going to put some of this lace around it because I think that looks very Victorian. Easy enough, just a row of glue all around the top and glue it on. I think that adds a little bit more of a Victorian look to this. Then pop it down, get your dowel or your stick or whatever you've got and you push that into the hole. And because if it was a perfect fit, now all that fabric is in there, it should be a really snug fit. And it is. So look at that, that was really easy and it's so effective. I absolutely love that. You know me, I do like to change things up. So let's have a look if some flowers will look nice on the front of that. I think I'll put this little flower on. It's quite a big flower really, isn't it? It's not really a little flower. It's all personal taste, but I like that with a bit of greenery on the bottom. It just adds to the spring feel, I think. So let's see what this looks like upon my display.
Mr. Onzoak. One thing the Victorians loved was their shadow boxes and their collections of things. They were avid collectors, and I thought it would be nice to make a bit of a shadow boxy collector's tray type wall hanging. I've got this that I picked up from the charity shop. It's rather grubby, but I'm not going to clean it because we're getting rid of all this. I like these ones with the little slidey things. Much easier to use than those ones you've got to bend up and down. Take that out. Oh, that's somebody's photograph. Looks like a statue's hand with all the pigeons. Perhaps Trafalgar Square, something like that. Who knows? We'll never find out. Take the glass out. And now we've got a lot less frame to clean up. And now this backing board needs to go back in, but isn't that boring? So I've come up with two choices. I've got this wood print. It's not a very dark wood print. And it does look like floorboards and they're a bit narrow. Or what I thought might be better is something like this, which is like a Victorian pattern. Plain enough that it's not going to distract from what's in the cabinet. But I think I prefer that. So I'm going to use that. And green is a bit spring-like, even though this is a muted green, which is typical of the Victorian colours. This is my last craft of the day. And as you can see, my desktop is suffering. Out with the Scotch glue stick. I love these. These are a really good quality glue. Saying that, I have very good results with paper when you're using just the cheap ones from the pound shop or Dollar Tree, I suppose. If you live in the States. If you're wondering what I'm using and you'd like to use the same products, if you check out my Amazon store, there is a link down there in the description. You'll get taken to my shop where I've got lots of different things. I've got a section called Stick It and all the glues and Cut It and all the cutting -y things I use. Oops, knocking everything over. Just to give you a helping hand if you need it. Pop that on there. Square it up to two sides to save the cutting. Out with my tired old cutting mat. Out of interest, you may not realise that the cutting mats are only guaranteed to be used with those roller cutters. I didn't realise that. They say not to use just a scarf like this on them. So I always use my old mat for that. Saying that, mind, there's no damage on my old mat, really. So there we've got the backboard and that's going to go back into the frame. Simple enough, I'm not even going to paint this frame. If you've got a frame that needs painting up, then quick coat of paint. And you'll be good to go. And there we go, that's looking very Victorian. Check which way is the top. Not that I've ever done the whole thing and then realised it was upside down. No, 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 not me. <laughs> right, I've cut you three pieces of balsa wood. I love balsa wood because it's so easy to cut. You can cut it with your craft knife. You do need to measure this because otherwise you're going to end up with everything all over the shop. I'm going to put a layer of hot glue down the ends of my balsa. You have to work fairly quick otherwise it'll go cold. And then lining it up with the pencil marks, pop it into place and then clear off the glue quickly <laughs> before it sets. There's possibly a way of doing this without getting glue everywhere, but I don't know what it is. And then just, oh, look at that. I've even got a pencil stuck to my gun today. <laughs> Things are really getting bad. Then do the same with the other two. If you don't like it being all haphazard with odd shaped shelves, you can always put the shelves exactly at the right measurement so that you get four equally divided compartments. But that way I can't use some tall things. And I want some tall things in this. Still the right way up, always a good sign. Right, change of plan. You know me, I like this cabinet other than the fact it's so pale. Victorians were into their dark wood, so I'm going to take the backboard off and then I'm going to apply this Rust-Oleum Furniture Finishing Wax in dark. This is really easy to apply, you just rub it in. Now that, compared to that, I think is much more Victorian looking. The Victorians went into such dark wood that it could possibly go darker. But this is fine for me. I don't like things too dark. I'm not a big fan of very, very dark wood. And 
now I'm popping the backing board back in. I can't remember which way up I was doing this originally, but I know I want the big bit at the bottom now because if I'm going to put heavier things in, the actual frame is stronger than the balsa wood. So now all I need to do is to load this up with some interesting things. So let's have a look at some of the things I'm going to put in. And one of them is this fossilised tree trunk. That's quite impressive, isn't it? So that's going to go on the bottom shelf. It is quite weighty. I've got a few feathers that I picked up when I'm round and about the place. And I got a few little pretty feathers. So I can use those. I've got a pine cone. I love the look on a pine cone. And this is quite a... Unusual one for Wales. We don't get many pine trees that have these sort of pine cones on. I got this one from France. I've got a gourd. Some lovely shells. Got a lovely crystal. And a bird's egg that I made, as you can tell by the hole in the bottom, from a plastic egg. And this little bottle of shells. Oh, they are so beautiful and going to look lovely on my shelf. So let's see what this looks like up on my display, all dressed in its finery. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I love making Victorian decor and I love the spring too. So perfect combination for me. Which was your favourite? I'd love to know. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe because there are a lot more exciting projects coming up right through the year. I'll see you all next time, but until then, don't forget, have fun. Bye.